Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So we had a pretty solid show tonight, I would say from top to bottom, start to finish. It was overall a pretty action-packed show, which is good because that's kind of the direction that Impact had said they were going, where they wanted more action, less talking. So, so far, they've delivered, um, especially after a huge week of good news for Impact, which... Uh, I will get to in tomorrow's video, or Saturday, not sure when it'll be up, but I'm thinking of doing a new video series, maybe every week, depending on how much news there is, but kind of a news and rumors video, so hopefully that can debut in a few days, but uh, yeah, so we open the show with uh, Alberto El Patron backstage blaming Eli Drake for his loss to Johnny Impact last week, um, and he basically says that uh, he's coming for Eli. So the opening match of the night was uh, Caleb Conley versus uh, Ishimori. Um, nothing ever wrong with starting the uh, show out with the good X Division match. Um, they're starting to build this X Division back up, since especially since um, with the likes of Desmond Xavier, Trevor Lee. Well, now Ishimori has seemed to be a focal part of it. He's been on like the last three or four weeks after we hadn't seen him since probably Destination X before that. Um, but like I said, this was a good match. Definitely a good match to start the show. Uh, good back and forth. Of course, Lee had to get involved. Not much as you'd expect, but uh, at one point I think Caleb threw Ishimori on the outside and uh, Trevor attacked him. But eventually Ishimori was able to gain control of the match and uh, puts Conley away with the uh, 450 splash. After the match, obviously, you have a second person on the outside. They come in, attack Ishimori, and uh, Desmond Xavier comes out and makes the save. So I would assume probably next week we will get a tag team match here. Um, I think they were talking about Ishimori possibly getting a X Division title match, so I would wouldn't be surprised if uh, that's where this all leads to. Um, definitely an asset to have. He's looked great in the ring since he's been here. Beautiful 450 splash. Um, but yeah, so up next we had the uh, second triple threat match to crown the new Knockouts champion. Uh, last week Laurel Van Ness won, and this week. It will be Rosemary versus Sienna versus Allie, and the winner facing uh, Laurel Van Ness next week. So it's a pretty good match, good back and forth, uh, just like the first match was last week. Um, a lot of action going on. So Allie and Rosemary were battling back and forth mostly. They end up hitting a double super kick on Sienna. Sienna rolls outside the ring. Allie goes to hit the code breaker on Rosemary. Rosemary catches her, holds her, turns it into a red wedding, and she wins the match. So next week we have Rosemary versus Laurel Van Ness, and I think that'll be a great match. So up next we have the OVE airing of grievances, which that's, I guess, how Impact had titled the segment in on social media. Um, so... Sammy Callahan, of course, comes out and grabs the mic, and he's always so, um, I don't want to say heartfelt, but definitely intense with his promos, and it really, I don't know, it really draws you in. This was this was good. Uh, so he basically says that this is no longer wrestling, but gang warfare, and he says he accepts their rematch, but it's going to be on OV's terms and their rules, so or their time and their rules, whatever. Um, but yeah, then he decides to, uh, run down Canada. That was kind of his theme throughout the, uh, promo, besides obviously getting to LAX. And, uh, at this point, you get a local tag team, TDT, from Smash Wrestling. Um, so yeah, TDT, OVE, LAX, pretty funny. Um, so they come out and, you know, they basically take offense to what Sammy's saying about Canada. So they attack OVE, um... Sammy goes to the outside, comes in with a kendo stick. They uh, go to set one of the guys up for a uh, all-seeing eye, but LAX music hits. LAX comes out from the crowd. They fend off um, OV. 
They have, I think, one of the Chris brothers in the ropes, and Conan goes to take the kendo stick and hit him with it. And as he goes to swing it, it goes out of his hands and hits a fan in the first row. Um, Yeah, definitely not what they intended to do. But for the segment itself, it was good. I really like the storyline that's been going on between the two teams. My only problem is, is when it's over, where do you go from here? This impact desperately needs to build their tag division. Um, so we go backstage, and Gail Kim and Allie are talking, and Allie's probably leaving the building at this point, disappointed with her loss. And Gail gives Allie some encouraging words, and Allie is her peppy, happy self again. So this segment was pretty good. This was um, another KM segment where he's trying to prove his worth to uh, America Top Team. So he goes outside of a gym, and he just starts beating people up. He beats somebody up outside the gym, then he goes in the gym and starts throwing guys around and beating them up. And it was just, I don't know, it's, it's giving KM something to do. There was a while there where he was just doing nothing. Um... Speaking of somebody who's doing nothing, we haven't seen Braxton Sutter in a while. I think he got beat up in one of those backstage segments. I think it might have been actually from KM a couple weeks back. But, uh, yeah, not much from him. So uh, we go to LAX's hideout, and uh, Conan says that next week him and Sammy Callahan are going to have a sit-down face-to-face, and he is going to make him an offer that he can't refuse. So, again... One of my gripes about Impact is the way they stage the show, where you get, like, we had two matches and a promo in the ring, and then we had one, two, three, and then four, another backstage segment. So we had four backstage segments in a row. If you kind of put them between the matches, it kind of helps the show progress. Well, not progress, but just move quicker. Um, even though I didn't think the show dragged at all tonight, I was surprised at how quick the show went by. Um Then we have a backstage interview with Mackenzie interviewing Eli and Chris Adonis, a.k.a. DNA. Um, They basically run down PD and and Johnny Impact, and they're always good for an interview. Uh, They play off each other well. And I really like Mackenzie as an interviewer. She's not very robotic. Facial expression, she's always into everything. It's good. That brings us to the Grand Championship match with EC3 defending against Matt Seidel. A story that's been building up here is that Matt Seidel is a choke artist, and EC3 was just going to prove that he chokes again. Uh, So apparently we have Falaba as the guest judge, the third judge, um, which he had a Grand Championship match two or three weeks ago, I believe. Um... So yeah, we get into the match, and Seidel starts off the first round with a lot of offense, but EC3 is able to finish on the offensive, and he wins the first round. Seidel is able to win the second round, and after that round, EC3 gets cheap shot in. Third round, EC3 setting him up for a superplex. Seidel knocks him onto the ground, goes for the airborne. EC3 is able to get up. They bump heads. Third round ends. First judge picks EC3. Second judge picks Matt Seidel. Falaba is the tiebreaker. 10 10. It's a draw. So after that, obviously EC3 retains. After that, uh, EC3 taunts Seidel with the choking uh, thing, and he basically says he choked again. Um,. I'm glad they didn't end this here. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a rematch. At least the feud continues. Uh, I I, I don't know how I really feel about the Grand Championship. I I like that they tried something new, but especially with a worker like Matt Seidel, who's very quick-paced, it kind of slows the matches down, and it kind of draws you out. I, I don't think it translates well to wrestling. Like I said, it was good in theory, but my personal opinion... Then we get a Park Park and Park commercial again. Uh, this one was good. Um, I think the fir- the guy got, what did he get, hit by a car? Or he slipped? No, he slipped on a, uh, that was the first commercial. He slipped on water. 
and they kick the sign away. You know, we didn't see any reason you slipped, or we didn't see a sign up here. And then they go and, you know, have their whole spiel on how they can protect everybody. And I'm going to be interested, I'm interested to see how this translates to um, Ethan Page making his debut in Impact. It should be interesting. These things have been good. I like the the retroness of it and the old grainy commercial. It, it's just good all around. I like that they're doing something entertaining like this. And that brings us to Lashley and Lambert versus Moose and Storm. So I think this match had a lot of people intrigued just because everyone was interested to see how Lambert was going to get involved in this match. And, well, he did not disappoint as he came to the ring not wearing any shoes, and that's how he was going to fight. So... Much to everybody's surprise, uh, Lambert would only get involved in the match when Lashley got some big offensive move in and he could go in to uh, kind of pick up the pieces and go for the pinfall. So every time he would do that and either Moose or Storm would kick out, he'd tag Lashley back in. Um, but eventually, Lashley hits a spear on James Storm. Lambert tags himself in, goes in, and scoops up the victory. So after the match, uh, Lashley wasn't too fond of this because obviously he was the one that did all the work. Um, so I wonder if there's going to be some hostility later on there. I mean, it's, they seem to make up at the end, but could just be a little bit of a hint. And then we get the PD and PD Williams and uh, Johnny Impact interview, basically talking about their match with uh, Adonis and Drake later on tonight, which brings us to the main event with Petey Williams and Johnny Impact versus Chris Adonis and Eli Drake. Um, all four competitors are good. Good match. Um, heels did what heels do. They were able to isolate um, Petey Williams for most of the match. So he was kind of uh, basically beaten up the entire time. I mean, he was able to get some offense in here and there. Um Adonis and Drake were able to use a lot of hot, uh, quick tags. You know, good tag team uh, wrestling, heel tag team wrestling. Fans were really getting into it. Chant for Johnny. Oh, I want to make note that it seemed, I don't know where this was in the taping schedule, but it seemed like the arena was a little more packed and they were a little en more energetic tonight. Um, so, yeah, they were chanting for impact. He eventually gets the hot tag. You know, goes crazy like... Uh, most people do with the hot tag, uh, and he ends up hitting the Starship Pain on Chris Adonis for the win. Uh, after the match, Eli Drake grabs the title, standing in the ring. Out comes Alberto El Patron, attacks him from behind, and then he hits Eli Drake with a DDT onto the belt, and that's how he closes out the show. So one thing I want to note is that every week I complain about interference in the matches and... Besides the minor interference that we got from Trevor Lee in the first match, there was no interference in any of the matches. So it was uh, good to see. But like I said, it, this was a, a good show overall. Kept me entertained the whole two hours. Didn't, you know, look at the time and be like, oh, it's only that time. No, it, like I said, kept me interested and uh, it flowed really well. So like I said, hopefully tomorrow I have a new show coming of impact news rumors and notes and yeah so this has been my impact wrestling review if you like what you saw here please like share and subscribe bye